comment here from Ryan Brock. Justin Jacobs looked great in coverage. I would agree. I think that linebacker unit right now is as strong as it's been since probably the Jewel, uh, Bo Bauer, uh, Ben Neiman years, or year, I should say, when they were at their strongest. I believe that was 2017. Um, and now with Seth Benson, Jack Campbell, and Justin, if they stay healthy, tremendous unit and anchoring what is a very good, and I know I'm 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 trying not to be hyperbolic here since we're just coming off this win, but Don, this secondary looks elite right now, at least from my perspective. I think we're solid in the back end. My biggest concern defensively would still be our front four. You know, there's some teams maybe that can muscle us better than Indiana did. Indiana didn't have great success. Uh, and, of course, that they had a big offensive line like most Big Ten teams. Um, I thought we did a good job of holding up with our front four. Uh, I think I don't know how many guys we played. I think we played at least six, maybe seven. Uh, but I agree with you. I think our stronger unit is linebacker core. What number is uh, Jacobs, Justin Jacobs? Five. That's what I thought. Because I know late, later in the game I saw number five, and I, I wasn't familiar with that number. And he kept showing up, so that's a good yeah. sign. Uh, he looked he looked very much like he belonged on the field, um, and of course, uh, 33 had a super game. Uh, word to the wise: if I was playing against him, even in this game after that first pick, I would have for sure double cut him. I would have for sure shown an out route or a stop route, or maybe a slant route, and then broken down the field with the and with the pump fake, of course, on the part of the quarterback. Indiana didn't do that, uh, you know. Uh, he does a good job of jumping, jumping the, the throw. He does a good job of reading the quarterback's eyes. Um, but there are um, smart play callers that will, um, that will try to put him in position where they use his aggressiveness against him. So that's where the double cuts come in. We used to have, just to give you an idea of how sophisticated some offenses are, I don't know that too many are this way. We used to have a call to take care of that, and I think the listeners might find it interesting. The huddle call might be if you've got a really aggressive corner, the huddle call might be pro right bait, 71 out and go. Bait simply means we're actually we're alerting our offense. We're going to call a dummy audible. We're going to call the dummy audible that would indicate we're throwing an out route, except it's not an out. We used a bait call. We're setting him up. He's going to jump the out route. We're going to beat him deep. And I don't think too many teams have that in their, in their scheme. But whether they have that particular component in their scheme, uh, and, and that's a huddle call that we might make in a game, uh, I would expect, if nothing else, maybe without the bait call, maybe there's no apparent audible call, but at the very least, the huddle call would be, a simple call would be pro right, 71 out and go. Now we're showing the out route. We want him to jump the out route. We're going to beat him down the field. And the quarterback's got to do a good job with a good hard pump fake. Of course, a good hard pump fake, you're still catching the ball with your lead hand and quickly resetting so you can get the ball off before help arrives on the on that perimeter throw. So if I were number 33, I would expect that Iowa State's going to try to double cut him. Then they may simply just try to run by him because maybe they feel he's he's really not honoring that receiver with enough proper cushion. Did Indiana ever try to really get on top of, of Riley? I don't know that they did. I can't remember for sure that they simply ran a go route no. down the field against him and threw it up. And he, of course, you'd think that'd be part of their game because Freifogel's tall. And a few of those other guys have good height. It didn't appear they wanted to uh, involve their receivers in a lot of jumping contests, although that is part of their offense. They do throw the ball up. They don't mind. In the past, I've seen them not mind throwing what we call 50-50 balls. They throw it up. They don't know for sure that their guy's going to get it, but they, they like their chances simply because maybe he's an inch or two taller. Uh, maybe he can high point the ball a little bit better than the DB they happen to be working against at that moment. Uh, but the bottom line is we didn't get tested down the field. Uh, I do think all of our receivers did a good job of holding coverage, and then once the ball was thrown, did a good job of attacking uh, back toward the flight of the ball. In other words, there were a few Indiana receivers that maybe faded from the ball a little bit downfield. They, they found themselves maybe fading from the ball. When I say fading, they're actually working away from the throw. Uh, you know, they're not really reacting back toward the ball. So we always talk to our receivers about squeezing to the ball, squeeze to the ball. That doesn't mean that you're running like a madman back toward the, toward the quarterback. It just means you're working back toward the ball to keep that defender on your backside. You know, you don't want him being able to fly through your shoulder and get in position to make a play. 
And you saw that several times today. Our guys did a good job of attacking the ball. I'm not surprised. They're a well-coached secondary. And they have, they have a good bit of experience. They know how to play. So um, they held up very well today. Uh, hats off to the, to the back end. Hats off to the linebackers in particular. And I want to give the D-line credit for, for being solid, too. You didn't see a lot of running room for the Indiana running backs. And that's to the credit of the front four as well. I thought early on it seemed like the Iowa defensive line did can get some consistent pressure on Penix. We saw Noah Shannon make a couple plays, big number 99 early. Um, as the game wore on, it seemed like they were able to get into the backfield less and less. Um, at least that was my my perspective. And they've got a lot of young guys on that line. I thought Lucas Van Ness played well when he was in there. Um, I'm trying to think of his number for you, but uh, he, he did play well. I thought Noah Shannon played well. Um, any other standouts defensively along that line as, as far as somebody? Obviously, Ben Valkenberg looked good, too. Yeah, I like 97. He's a good player. And uh, uh, and I like 13 in relief. Joe Evans, uh, yeah. you know, he comes in on long yardage, and, and uh, he's he's got a, a quickness element to him that those tackles a lot of the time will struggle with. So that's just a good job of using your personnel. You know, maybe Joe Evans never shows up hardly other than uh, very likely passing downs, third and medium, third and long. Uh, but, but of course, it gives some relief to that, that, that player that's out there ahead of him. And, and um, hopefully as the season plays out, we'll, we'll improve that depth a little bit from one week to the next by getting them a little more playing time all the time. There at the end, of course, we had virtually all subs in on defense, and we got – they got their feet wet today a little bit. I think in general they were maybe going against a few twos for Indiana. Uh, but number five was still in there running a lot of the time, even late. And, of course, they pulled their quarterback at some point. Uh, that's one disappointment I had. I wish I wish that our backup would have gotten in on the previous series. I think yeah. we had th three snaps today. That's, uh, I was ready. Of course, Spencer's he was hopping around a little bit uh, as a result of that quarterback draw. And I thought, wouldn't it be tragic if we got a few of these starters injured here when the score is 31 or 34 to 6? Um, and um, number 65, might have, did, did he ever come out? Did our, our All-American center ever yeah, come out? Yeah, he did. Matt Fagan, Matt Fagan, his backup, did come in at the end. Just those last three plays probably, I bet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So guys like that, I wish we could get them out of the game maybe one series earlier. I know I'm. maybe you say it's a, a moot point, but – but late in the game, they're tired anyway, and they're a little more likely to get injured when they get tired. Um, of course, they want to they want to take all the snaps because they're competitive players. But let's face it, our backups need need reps. They haven't. In some cases, they've hardly played at all. Uh, and a good example of that, of course, is Padilla. Padilla's hardly been on the field. And um, there's an opportunity to get him in on that previous set of downs. I wish we'd done that, uh, but that's not my call, of course. And, and uh, maybe we'll have some opportunities up ahead, not so much next weekend maybe, but with those non-conference games that are coming up here in September.